Hello, welcome back to my channel. So uh, this is going to be my second uh, video uh, for this channel that I created as an experiment. Uh, if you feel you like the content here, uh, would like to encourage me to get carry on and make more content. Uh, remember to subscribe uh, using the buttons below. Uh, remember to like the videos and remember to share the video with at least one of your friends every time you find something worth sharing. So all this will help me kind of uh, get the feedback, keep the motivation and do more content. Uh, today topic is going to be uh, what programming language should I learn in 2021? And while I'm really not going to give you a definite answer, answer is that it depends on uh, what's your, per your unique perspective. I'm going to go through some ways to kind of uh, measure that and, and figure out what you want to do. So let's get to it. Mm, there are some ways to kind of figure out what are popular uh, programming languages, where are all the buzzes, and one of them is TOB index. So it's a kind of benchmark indicator for popularity of programming languages. Um, right now we can see that the top five languages would be C, Java, Python, C++, C Sharp. Uh, however, TOB index is uh, uh, based only on, on uh, search engine keywords, so it's figuring the popularity based on how much uh, people are googling the language. So it's one, one kind of uh, viewpoint to things, but not necessarily everything. There is another very interesting benchmark, uh, Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Um, there is a recent one from 2020, and I'm going to open it right now. So Stack Overflow Developer Survey uh, tells you what languages people are using, what they like to use, and this is based on buzz in Stack Overflow, so it's another kind of good metric. I'm going to show you one thing from here. Yeah, I'm inside this little tiny bubble here. <laughs> so going to show you one interesting thing here. So there's some uh, terminology we have a backend developers, full stack developers, and front end developers. So, depending on your background, these might be very familiar terms for you. But, backend is mainly about uh, good, good, solid uh, kind of engine architecture. Uh, you have the backend programming languages, you have any integrations you need to do, you have any, uh, any databases you need to use, persistent data storages and stuff like that. Then we have front-end, which is all about presentation and design and user experience, a very important discipline as well. And finally, we have full stack, full stack being a combination of both. Uh, ironically, you could say that full stack developer is one who su sucks equally in all these disciplines. So uh, idea is here not necessarily to pay attention to the percentages, but mostly that these are the most popular styles, and then we have some, some kind of more niche, niche uh, areas that are significantly smaller. Uh, but I really wanted to take you to the technology place where we can, we can see popularity of programming languages uh, based on Stack Overflow statistics. Uh, I think this uh, questionnaire was sent to 65,000 Stack Overflow users, so they got to decide uh, what are the most used and most uh, popular programming languages. So here's something interesting. Uh, we have JavaScript, then we have HTML, CSS, SQL, then we have Python and Java, that's our top five. If you are learning a new language this year or refreshing something you already know or expanding your knowledge or just generally curious about these things, uh, it's a good idea to take a look at the top five or top ten of these. Uh, JavaScript is right now extremely popular because it's a good language to use for both front-end and back-end development, so you can, you can do all, all with JavaScript. Then we have HTML, CSS, which is ever popular, and SQL for databases, so these have always been popular. It's kind of common knowledge for any developer, pretty much. Then we have Python. Uh, Python has been on a huge rise recently, and uh, I'm actually going to do some sessions on Python later on. And then we have Java. Uh, my next upcoming short tutorials will be focused on Java, 
for a few reasons which I will now explain. So Java is among the top 5 or top 2 or top 10 depending on who you ask. It's been there for quite a long time. So Java was uh, published in the first, first iteration in 1995 and it's been around for 25 years already. So it's, uh, it's uh, almost as old as I am, you know. I've been uh, along with Java journey from quite the beginning. So that makes me feel very old as well. Uh, many people shy away from Java these days be because uh, it's seen as a modern COBOL. So it's like, it's like uh, uh, old and outdated and only used for enterprise systems. And that's entirely true. However, uh, Java is also a great Swiss army knife. It's used by 7 million people around the world already. There are 7 million developers for Java, actually more than the uh, entire population of Finland combined. So if we, if we wanted to, we could actually create a new country just out of Java developers. I bet they would automate a lot of the things there. Yeah, uh, It is quite old and the old version of Java uh, was only growing uh, bigger and bigger every year. However, that recently changed after Java version 8. Uh, we have got a lot, lot uh, faster pace for new developments. Uh, actually some things are being removed it's getting more lightweight and getting some more or less exciting features that we have seen in other languages uh, you can do pretty much anything with java it's well supported a lot of tutorials and one advantage is that java has similar syntax than javascript and c sharp popular language on the microsoft side and kotlin and scala based on same Java virtual machine, so they're same ecosystem, same libraries. Both languages are kind of more niche. They are, they are uh, smaller, smaller languages, but still uh, very popular languages. So once you learn Java, it's very easy to kind of migrate to these other languages or just alternate between these. I try to keep these uh, modules very small and lightweight so they are easy to consume for you. Uh, I wanted to show you a little bit on, on, the, on the field uh, where uh, professional software development is going on. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, uh, Stack Overflow site, which I link in the description, um, you can actually uh, vary some, some kind of uh, settings there. For example, you can take a look at the a number of professional developers viewpoints. You can take a look at the salaries, you can expect, spoiler alert, uh, you typically get best salaries uh, for the technologies that are not known by a wide range of people. So more exotic uh, technologies uh, might get you better salaries, however, with less uh, employment opportunities. So if you want to pick up a niche technique, there is not so many employers that are going to offer, offer you jobs with it. However, you can expect a better pay if you are really good. If pay is the interesting thing for you, I would also like to point out that uh, uh, being a master in one programming language is just a tiny part of the software developer's work. So if you want to increase your salary, uh, you should actually widen your, your skills otherwise, not just programming languages. So you should, uh, uh, for example, be good in agile methodologies you should be good in communication so that you are able to get teams cooperate, uh, get, get your team online and being effective and enjoying time. So uh, those kinds of skills are actually more meaningful than just adding one more programming language. For the next upcoming sessions, I'm going to be concentrating for Java until I run out of things to tell you. Um, uh, then I will probably move on to JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, some other fun, fun things to do. Uh, I'm also going to concentrate uh, very much on the latest versions because uh, this is my own channel now and I, there's no reason for me to stick to old uh, Java versions like Java 8, which is still widely used in many places. We can just go to the latest versions and have fun with the latest stuff. I try to also find some, some ways to kind of find the angle why you should really learn it this year or why you should go get back to it or uh, what can you do with it or how to make uh, the learning motivational and fun for you. 
So this will be coming up later. This was just a sh very short kind of uh, introduction session number two, and I hope it was fun for you. So remember, if you want to keep this channel alive and if you want to see more content by me, support me by subscribing with the buttons below here. Uh, you can also uh, put some thumbs up for the videos that you like and share them with any colleagues, friends, even your mother, uh, anybody who might find these interesting. So uh, the more subscribers I get, the better the channel is going to get. And then uh, I'm able to uh, kind of keep up the energy and keep this going on. My plan is uh, probably to at least uh, try to keep this alive for a year. But if there's nobody else listening than my own mother, I'm probably not going to do that. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. It's early days. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new, perhaps were entertained by this one, and stay tuned for more.